Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson three of the respiratory system unit, lower respiratory system part one. There are two parts to this. Uh, essentially, the lower respiratory system is the part that's in your chest. Um, so there is a lot to talk about when we start talking about the lungs and how exactly they extract oxygen from the air and put CO2 back out through your mouth into the air. So the different parts of the lower respiratory system, there is the trachea or in windpipe. So right after the larynx, uh, there is the trachea. We also call that the windpipe. You can feel it here. Uh, your bronchi, which are branches of your trachea, your bronchioles, which are even smaller branches of your trachea. We have your lungs and then your alveoli. We are going to save lungs and alveoli till part two. We're going to focus on these parts, which is essentially the different tubes that air can follow through uh, to get to the place where we actually extract the oxygen. So trachea or windpipe is key point one. The trachea, colloquially, is called the windpipe. That means in everyday um, language, it's called the windpipe. It is cartilaginous, which means it's made of cartilage, kind of like your ear or your nose. It's hard but flexible. And it is a tube that connects the larynx to the bronchi of the lungs. So it is a tube that goes straight down. Your bronchi start to branch off to your lungs. So it connects these branches to your throat or your wind, um, your vo voice box, essentially. It allows the passage of air down into your lungs. It is found at the front of your neck. That's why you can feel it. And it is covering the esophagus. So the esophagus is behind it. Um, the esophagus is for food. So uh, we'll talk about a tracheostomy in a little bit, but that's why you can um, help people breathe by putting a tube in here and it doesn't go into their esophagus. Their esophagus is behind. Because their esophagus, esophagus is behind, if you need to place a feeding tube, it has to go in through the mouth or through more often through the nose um, to go in behind the trachea. So the trachea is surrounded by 16 to 20 rings of cartilage. So you can kind of feel it. Uh, the different rings in your trachea, those are each rings of cartilage. Uh, and they essentially prop that part open um, so that it is hard to um, block it. So it makes it round and open uh, so that it's difficult to, get to choke. This is a picture of the end of the trachea right here. So we have the end of the trachea and then we have it branching off into the bronchioles. You can see that they are smaller but uh, tubes, but essentially the same. So the trachea would extend up maybe uh, six to eight inches above this, and this is where it starts to branch off into the different parts. Uh, this is a very common uh, dog chew toy, uh, or it's kind of like a bone. So this is, I think, pig esophagus. Um, they're dried out. Uh, you can see the rings of cartilage in here. Those are the rings that we're talking about. Uh, you can also, sorry, just kind of see them here. There's a ring with a ring, a ring here. Even these have semi-distinct rings. So they're each made of rings of cartilage. It's really defined when you've dried them out and made them thin. Cilia, key point two. So what are cilia? Cilia are tiny hairs on the inside of the trachea. Now I've talked about hairs within your nose. They are, these are much, much smaller. The hairs in your nose are large compared to these. These are tiny microscopic hairs. I think, yes, see how, like this is an electron microscope seeing very, very tiny things. You can see how thin they are. You can kind of see a cross sectional part. These are the cilia. I don't know why that's blocked off there, but these are the cilia here. They look like tiny hairs and these line your trachea. So the cilia are, are small hairs on the inside of the trachea and they wave back and forth very slowly and in rhythm with one another. And what their job really is, is to clear the lungs and the trachea of mucus and catch foreign invaders before you inhale them. So they are little hairs that are waving and they systematically wave to move mucus from your lungs up towards your throat so that it can be coughed out. Uh, it will also stop any bacteria or it will help stop viruses uh, before you inhale them all the way into your lungs and then they will catch them in the mucus and slowly move 
that mucus out so it can be coughed out or often swallowed as you know the holes are right there once it's swallowed your stomach acid will break up the bacteria or the viruses and prevent infection generally so these again are the cilia right here this would maybe be a piece of mucus that the cilia is waving up towards your throat so you can cough it out so how does smoking affect your cilia smoking a cigarette will disable your cilia from 30 to 60 minutes so essentially in that time your cilia cannot wave and the mucus and bacteria and viruses and all the toxins you've inhaled from smoking can settle into your lungs this leaves a uh, time for infection to start um, you do not want infections in your lungs it can be very very damaging and have lifelong effects so eventually if you keep smoking cigarettes over and over and over again the cilia will die they will quit growing they will become thinner and they'll lose their function altogether and this is essentially why people get a smoker's cough there is they're not able to properly clear their lungs continuously because they smoke and they have killed and damaged their cilia or have just disabled them for a certain period of time a tracheostomy as i talked about a little bit earlier is a tube gets inserted into the trachea to assist in air getting into the lungs it is an, it is a bypass of the upper respiratory system and remember the upper respiratory system is from your larynx up into your mouth and your nose so when we bypass that we have a tracheostomy um, so what can cause us to have problems getting air into our lungs what can cause us to need to bypass that upper part um, if you have trauma to your jaw to your neck you may need to have a tracheostomy to help you breathe if you're choking or if you're having an allergic reaction like anaphylaxis you, a tracheostomy may be necessary so that air is able to enter the lungs uh, you can see below that there's a real-life procedure involving a trache tracheostomy. It is slightly graphic, um, but it has saved a lot of lives and is very, very useful to help people breathe um, when they have had an accident or had trauma or had brain damage. Bronchi and bronchioles. So bronchi is plural for a single bronchus, but we always talk about them as bronchi and bronchioles. A bronchus is essentially a tube for air that travels down towards the lungs. It branches off of the trachea. Each bronchus extends from the trachea, one to the left and one to the right. There's actually a few more than that. They branch off to each lobe of the lungs. Um, they keep branching into more and more and more until they get smaller and smaller when they're called bronchioles. These are the smaller tubes that we refer to them um, when they're small as bronchioles. So bronchi, I think this is fairly intuitive. Bronchi are the larger ones, bronchioles are the smaller ones. They branch into several different lobes within the lungs. We can see here a picture of that. So we've got the larynx with the trachea. These are, rings are representing the cartilage. We have the bronchi that separate here that get into very, very small bronchioles as they break off and get smaller and smaller and smaller. So as you saw in the picture earlier, I think this one right here there are several different branches uh, they kind of all start from up here uh, but we'll talk about why there's different branches off of the trachea uh, later on so here we have again the cartilage of branches off the small ones are bronchioles and the big ones are bronchi so how does the smoker's cough develop the cilia in the trachea and bronchi are no longer cleaning the lungs so and the debris and mucus that needs to be cleared um, by coughing um, cannot be done. So it, it, you have to cough a whole lot more deeply. It is a whole lot more thick. You can hear a whole lot more phlegm and eventually the cilia die completely. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to head to this website and do some research on bronchitis. Uh, if you have any questions about what I want you to do, please let me know. But I'll be back soon with part two of the lower respiratory system and get to, into exactly how we drag oxygen out of the air into our bodies and eventually how we use it. So thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon in class.